Newsreel history was again made by Pathé when we sent a cameraman to the United States, the Americans having generously allowed Britain to film their latest experiment in space. So, among passengers in this Sabina airliner, Pathé staff man George Young began the first stage of his unique assignment. At Cape Kennedy, they were nearing the end of long months of preparation for the most startlingly ambitious item of the U.S. space program to date, the rendezvous of a manned capsule and a target missile, Agena. Heroes of the attempt were to be Captain Walter Scherrer and Major Thomas Stafford. In these shots, we see the astronauts, on this day, the two most envied men in America, on their way to their own spacecraft, honored indeed to have been chosen for this part of the space program, whose ultimate aim is to land Americans on the moon. Similar scenes we have shown many times. But at St. Louis, Missouri, Pathé now explores a new field. How are men and missiles put into orbit? Behind the scenes in the construction of Gemini spacecraft, the marriage of top scientific knowledge, 1965, and the bewildering field of American know-how in advanced technology. Several thousand miles of wiring in the Gemini provide alternative safety circuits. Nothing is left to chance anywhere. Astronaut spacesuits are rigorously checked by a technician. The suit is tested for leaks and comfort under pressure. Space engineers fit instrument panels into the Gemini capsule. There can be no room for error. The malfunction of any instrument could mean danger for the two-man crew. But these men are experts, like all the technicians working on the American space program. There's little room inside the capsule, and instruments and controls are designed for easy use. Once sealed inside, the astronauts are entirely dependent on the capsule's supply of oxygen. The retro rockets are bolted into position on the Gemini's heat shield. It is these rockets which slow down the final descent to Earth before parachutes take over. In space, they also control the capsule's movements. But it was this spacecraft, the Agena target vehicle, which gave the United States its biggest space disappointment. Gemini was to have rendezvoused and joined up with Agena. A few thought anything would go wrong early on. The Atlas launching rocket was well tried, and around its pad, preparations for the countdown went smoothly. At the Houston Control, brain center of the entire operation, hopes were high. This was to have been one of the most important missions of the space program. All was set for the go-ahead, which would start the final countdown. Upon John Hodge, a Briton and director of NASA's manned space flights, rested the responsibility of starting the countdown. Always at this stage, excitement mounts, even for those at Cape Kennedy, to whom it has long ceased to be a novel experience. The plan was for the target missile, Agena, to be launched first, then Gemini 6. Shira and Stafford would link up with Agena in orbit, while both travelled at 17,500 miles an hour. In these moments of thrilling anticipation, it would have seemed the last possibility that they would never even begin their journey, that all their preparations would end in disappointment. Such are the occupational risks of setback in a spaceman's life. Only minutes now till the blast-off of Agena. And if Operation Rendezvous were not to make space history, nobody expected a hitch in the initial stages. Certainly no one in the blockhouse, where the scientists and technicians, tense but calm, worked till the moment of blast-off.
all seemed perfect. Yet before the exhaust cloud dispersed, and only six minutes after blast-off, a Gina exploded. The mock-up of the moon surface and the moon bug is a reminder that the present eight million pound misfortune only delays the rendezvous program. On the moon in 1970 remains the target. The Western world backs America to achieve it.